Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video and this one is on SPM trials as well because I know that it's coming really soon for you guys. So today I'm going to be giving you some tips on how you can perform better in trials and let's get into it right away. So the first tip that I have for you is to formulate a study plan that actually works for you. So if you're wondering, no, it's not too late to start studying for your trials yet. You just need to have a direction because any study plan is better than no study plan at all. You just can't approach an exam without having a plan. Um, having a plan just keeps you on track and makes sure that you actually finish studying everything before the exam. The complexity and the structure of your study plan really depends on how you work. If you're someone who has to have everything written out, like today I'm going to study biology chapter 1, 2, 3, then do it that way. If you're someone who can't really stick to a plan, like for me, I hate to plan out everything like physics chapter 1 today, biology chapter 2 today. I don't like to do that kind of stuff. What I like to do instead is to take the amount of topics that I have divided by the days that I still have left. Doing this does not confine me to studying a particular subject or a chapter per day. Maybe I schedule physics for today but I woke up feeling like I don't want to do physics. So what I do is I would take the amount of topics divided by the amount of days. And so when I do this, I actually have an idea of how many topics I have to cover each day in order to finish up everything before the exam. So doing this allows me to sort of have a structure to my day. I know how many things I have to complete today, which is a good start, but it doesn't confine me to one particular subject. Like if I have planned out everything in advance, like today I'm going to do physics and biology, but maybe I woke up feeling like I don't want to do any physics today. So that's the way that it works for me. Basically, I would just know roughly how many topics I have to cover each day in order to finish up the syllabus. I won't specify which topic or which subject I have to do for that particular day. However, if you are the kind of person who needs a very solid structure, like you have to wake up knowing that you are going to do this today, you're going to do this today, then um, your study plan would be very different from mine. You would have to really plan out like Monday, Physics Chapter 2, um, um, Physics Chapter 3, that sort of thing. So really figure out what works for you because I have tried to plan out like Monday, Physics Chapter 2, all that before, but it just didn't work for me because some days I woke up feeling like I don't want to do Physics, I feel like doing Bio. Yeah, so really try and figure out how it works for you and it really doesn't matter how your study plan is as long as you manage to cover up everything in time. Now this brings me to my second tip which is to do past year questions. Past year questions are literally the key to getting good grades and because they give you an idea of how the questions will be like, you sort of know which ones to actually focus on and a lot of people always ask me like which are more important in a certain um, subject or in a certain topic. Well, actually you would know if you do a lot of past years, if you do a lot of activity books. Because it's not to say that some sections of a topic are more important than the others, but it's all about which one is more likely to come up for an essay. So when you do a lot of past years, you will automatically have an idea of what will come up for an essay. Like something that I can think of right now is light and dark reaction of photosynthesis. So when I did a lot of past years last time, um, these questions kept coming up, you know, the question on light and dark reaction of photosynthesis. So that is an example of one important essay question. So this is the sort of thing that you will know if you do a lot of past year questions. And another thing is, I know not everyone can cover up the topics in time. Maybe you have started late or maybe there's some problem and you are just starting to revise now and you're worried that you cannot cover all of your topics in time. So what you can do is to do past year questions. When you have a limited amount of time and you want to still cover everything, I would highly suggest using past year questions to your benefit. So what you can do is you can bring up the textbook. Let's say you are at a loss for biology. You have a lot of chapters for biology left. So what you can do is you can bring out the topic that you haven't started on yet and just take a few minutes to brush through the topic, read through very quickly and right after that you can do the exercise. So when you do the exercise, you kind of test your knowledge and also when you got a particular 
um, question wrong, you have to write it down and write it down somewhere on a separate notebook about how you got this question wrong. So that is a good way to make sure that you actually go through every topic when you have limited time. So when the time is limited, maybe you have to change your strategy. Maybe usually you like to do notes for biology, but because there's no time, then using past year is a good alternative to make sure that you still cover up everything. For me, I think that when it comes to exams, the most important thing is not to know certain topics really well. The most important thing is to know the entire content although you don't know it well. You just need to know at least the entire content because anything can be tested from the content and maybe some objective questions will come from there. So if you have read it before, then you will roughly have an idea of what the right answer is. But if you neglect one or two topics completely, then when questions come up from that chapter, you're just at a loss. And the same thing goes for subject as well. I think that it's important to give enough time to all the subjects and not to do well in certain subjects only. So time allocation is very important for this. So my third tip for you is to create a cheat sheet. So what a cheat sheet is, is it can be any piece of paper, any piece of A4 paper. A4 paper gives you more flexibility to actually write all over the place. So I would prefer using an A4 paper. But basically how you use this cheat sheet is you have to imagine like this is the paper that the examiner will allow you to bring into the exam hall just pretend that it's that way so when you pretend it's that way you will try to squeeze in all the most important stuff into that paper so i like to do one page for one topic so when you go through biology chapter three you're going to read through and really try to decide which ones you are going to fit into that cheat sheet like if you are bringing that paper into the exam which information do you want to be on that paper you know so you are going to create that cheat sheet for every single one of the topics that you are studying and with the assumption that you can bring that sheet into the exam paper uh, into the exam hall which of course isn't true you can't bring that paper into the exam hall but thinking about it that way actually forces you to narrow down and pick out all the most important information from a particular topic that you're studying. So you can create cheat sheets for biology, chemistry, physics, and add maths as well, and also sejarah. And how you can fit in the most important information into this cheat sheet, one of the ways to do it is to do past year questions as well, which links back to my second tip. So doing past year questions and getting questions wrong will help you to identify the gaps in your knowledge. It will help you to realize what you still don't know yet. In case that question comes up in the exam, at least you will know it now. So what I suggest is, once you have done the past year paper, mark it immediately with a red pen, identify the things that you have gotten wrong and add it into that cheat sheet. Okay, that is one good way to do it. And you have to prepare for essay questions as well. And how I prepare for essay questions really largely depend on past year questions as well. I will try to analyze all the past year questions and just try to think of the possible essay questions from there. So my next tip is to rest or to take regular breaks. Taking regular breaks is so important. Really try not to overwork yourself. I know that this is a time where there is high period of stress. There are expectations from your family, from your teachers and expectations that you have of yourself as well. So it's really easy to fall down that hole of like having stress and not giving enough time for yourself because Whenever you're doing something that you like or whenever you're not studying, you feel bad and you feel like you're procrastinating. So this is why you have to have a clear cut point between your study time and your work time. You have to know, okay, now I'm supposed to study, so I'm going to give it my all. But when I'm supposed to relax, possibly during the weekends, you can dedicate that time to really wind down and relax. It's important to have a clear cut line between these two so that you do not burn out. If you burn out, then it will just be nearly impossible to continue studying, which is even worse. And your mental health is always a priority. So remember to take regular breaks, always. I know that a lot of you guys have been preparing for this trial. You have been working really hard for this trial. Like ever since Form 4, I believe that you've been putting in the hard work. And if you're nervous now, it simply means that you have put in the work and you have spent hours on revision. 
if you know that you still have a lot to cover, it means that you have started, which is really good. And no matter what results you get in the trials, I think it's important to be proud of yourself and the hard work that you have put in because it's really not easy to deal with everything that is going on with your life right now and also study at the same time. So I just want to say all the best with trials and I hope that you guys are proud of the results that you get because anything you get is a product of your hard work and you should definitely be proud of that. Anyway, I hope that these tips has been helpful to you guys and I hope that you can benefit from this video. Please remember to give this video a like and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!